In this lecture, we will learn about linear independence of vectors and in particular, if we are given n vectors, say v1, v2, dot dot dot, vn, then are they linearly independent? And if not, then how many vectors out of these n vectors are linearly independent? Before we move to linear independence, let us understand few concepts which will be important in understanding linear independence of vectors and first is linear combination of vectors if we are given k vectors say v1 v2 vk and k scalars alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha k then the expression alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus dot 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 plus alpha k vk is called linear combination of the vectors v1 v2 up to vk and here note that for this linear combination to be a valid linear combination all alpha i's cannot be zero that is at least one of the alpha i's should be non-zero next is linear dependence a vector u is said to be linearly dependent on vectors v1, v2 up to vk if there exist scalars and again note not all 0, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k such that we can write u as linear combination of these k vectors. This expression can be written as alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus dot 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 plus alpha k v k minus u equals to 0 and here note that at least one of the alpha i's is not 0 for this expression to be linear combination of k vectors. So these vectors v1, v2 up to vk and u are said to be linearly dependent. So a collection of vectors will be linearly dependent if linear combination of that collection is zero and at least one of the scalar coefficient is not equals to zero. Now if n vectors v1, v2, vn are not linearly dependent then they are called linearly independent. That means none of the vectors can be written as linear combination of remaining vectors. So from this we can write the general definition of linear independence of the vectors that is if v1 v2 dash 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 vn are linearly independent then for scalars alpha 1 alpha 2 dot 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 alpha n if alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus dot 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 plus alpha n vn is equals to 0 then this will be true only if all the alpha i's are equals to 0 because if any one of the alpha i's is not 0 then this expression will imply that the vectors are linearly dependent and because all the alpha i's are equals to 0 this also means that none of the vectors can be written as linear combination of remaining vectors. Even though it is very important to understand this definition of linear independence of vectors but it is not very useful in solving the questions because even when we know that given vectors are linearly dependent it will be very difficult to express any one of the vector as linear combination of remaining vectors in the questions we are normally given a collection of vectors say v1 v2 vn and we are asked are these linearly independent and if not then out of these n vectors how many are linearly independent and to solve these questions we use rank property of matrix the rank property of matrix says that rank of a matrix is equals to number of linearly independent rows that is also equals to number of linearly independent columns so what we do is given a collection of n vectors we arrange 
all the vectors in a matrix such that each vector forms a column of the matrix. So this is our vector V1 which has M components. This is our vector V2 which also has M components and so on up to Vn. So this way we form an M by N matrix where M is the dimension of each of the given vectors and N is number of vectors and rank of this matrix will be equal to number of linearly independent vectors in the given vectors because rank of this matrix is equals to number of linearly independent columns of the matrix and each column of this matrix represent one vector so the rank will give us number of linearly independent columns or number of linearly independent vectors in our given n vectors and if rank of this matrix is equals to n then all the given n vectors will be linearly independent here one important point that we should note that for an m by n matrix where m is dimension of each of the vector and n is number of vectors the rank of this matrix will always be less than or equals to smaller of m and n that is whichever one of m and n is smaller that is the maximum possible rank that our matrix can have so this will imply that maximum number of m dimensional linearly independent vector is m that is if our vectors are m dimensional then we cannot have more than m linearly independent vectors they will have to be linearly dependent but we can have less than m m dimensional linearly independent vectors now there are many ways to find rank of a matrix but if we have smaller size matrix that is up to 3 by 3 then minor method to find rank is faster however for bigger matrices finding row echelon form is usually faster so in that case rank of the matrix is equals to number of pivot columns in row echelon form of the matrix and to learn more about these two methods you can watch my videos on the minor method and row echelon form method to find rank of a matrix.